Well, hello, everybody. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. This week, we're going to talk about 10 tests for the success of your vision to make your business a success. This is an important one, and if you have a pencil and paper, you may want to do what you can to find whether you can write these down and make them happen. You know, your vision for success must be solid and flexible enough to pass several critical tests. If it's to guide the business enterprise to greatness, here's a brief 10 tests for your successful vision. Try these on for size and test yourself for the attractiveness of that vision to investors and to history. Number one, is your market identifiable and accessible? Well, test yourself as to whether or not you can identify the size of your market niche. Have you done the research or has somebody else? And whether you can overcome the many barriers to access the customers within your niche. It's a big question. And if you don't have the answer, you won't know how big your business could grow. Number two, where in the industry life cycle are you? If your vision is for a product or service that fills a need of an, in a mature industry, you may be flying against the prevailing winds. And if so, it may be much harder to be able to grow that business than it would be in a young industry that was growing along with you. Think of some of the industries that have grown very fast and businesses that started early enough to grow along with that industry as well. Number three, how large is the total market for your niche? This is a good question. If the total market in your niche is under $100 million a year, it's going to be difficult to build a $50 million business, even if it is a great business, because you'd have to dominate the niche and have over half of all of the sales in that particular market niche. If the market is 10 times the size of the company that you can grow, then your chances of dominance are still high and your chances of success are even higher. Number four, can you dominate that market? Now that we know the size of the total market and we've identified the market, can you dominate it? You know, the dominant player in a market controls the pricing for all those under it, and it often sets the risk profile for all the other entrants into it as well. So the dominant company is a very important one and a very important place to be. And yet it is something that doesn't necessarily mean that you're the first in the industry. It just means that you've done something to it. Well, wait just a minute. Are there barriers to entry? If you want to be dominant, is it easy for others to come in and take over your spot and do something that might just overwhelm you? You know, that would sap your growth and it would make it difficult for you to be able to be a successful company if others with more resources could come in and take over your marketplace as easy as all of that. Do you have a patent? And do you have a thicket of patents perhaps that protect your offering? And if not, do you have a strategic relationship with a customer or supplier or somebody that would help you to make this market even better? Number six, are your margins high enough to make this a successful company within a successful market? You know, some great ideas just can't make money and they ultimately die for lack of profit potential. Profit margins are higher for unique products or services early in the life cycle of a business. And yet, if you come into a mature industry, you're going to be competing against others on price as well as anything else. So remember that margins are important and without them, it'll be hard to build a great and large business. Number seven, can your business grow to about 20 to 40 million or $50 million in size over time? That's asking a lot for a small business. And many of the people who are watching this broadcast today could never imagine that. But there are a few who could. And as those people that will attract investors, perhaps get to a point of selling the business for a lot of money or an initial public offering. Either way, it's important to know how big you think this business could grow with a realistic expectation. Number eight, it's a big one. Do you have a world-class management team? The best way to protect against failure is to attract a team with members who have either seen the movie before, experienced success, or even experienced failure and that those people would recognize what they see when the time comes and do something about it to help make the company even more successful. We like to think that therefore those kinds of people are flexible and coachable and the kinds of people that at least investors look for as well. Number nine, do you have a compelling product? That's a simple question, but some great ideas just can't be made into great products at a reasonable enough price, at least, to attract customers. 
At the same time, early adopters may come, but that may not allow the company to move into the mass marketplace. Sometimes an idea is just too early for the available technology. Remember early cell phones? They were big bricks. They were very expensive. It was a dollar a minute to speak outside your local neighborhood. It just wasn't easy to build a cell phone based business. Look today at today's smartphones. Now there are apps. There are companies that use smartphones to make their businesses work that could never have worked without small, relatively inexpensive cell phones that also had the internet capabilities that we have today. Number 10. Is there an exit strategy for your business for investors over time? You know, you may be the investor. Your investment may be just time, or it may be time and money, or you may have attracted other people as well. While there are many professional service businesses that make fine lifestyle opportunities, such as architects and doctors and dentists, but these type of businesses don't sell for a lot of money because they're just not attractive to potential buyers willing to pay a premium for businesses that are worth millions more than just the value of their assets. Building a great business to create wealth for entrepreneurs at exit means thinking of the exit strategies right at the time that you build the business at the very beginning. Great wealth is made from selling great businesses at immense profit for entrepreneurs or investors who take the time to make this journey. Well, think about these 10. Here they are behind me. I hope you've had a chance to either look at them and think about them or maybe even grab a pencil and paper and write them down. But either way, this is kind of a roadmap for success for your business. I wish you well. In fact, I wish you success. I wish that you have an opportunity to dominate all of these and make a real business out of yours. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. See you next time.